Today we'll be doing some math. I've been doing a bunch of hacking exercises made by my friends at HackerOne. They spin up a server that has some deliberate uh, security holes in it and you get to hack it. Now, I don't have any experience doing security research, but I've been programming for a long time. So I thought this would be a fun new thing to learn. Then I came across this one exercise that is very math heavy. And let me tell you, I love math. I've been doing a lot of it in college, but I haven't been able to do much of it lately. So I was very excited to see this exercise. When I finished it, I went online looking for write-ups to see if other people solved it in the same way I did. But I only found one person and they used a shortcut that I also discovered, but which is less fun than the real deal. So I figured that a walkthrough might be useful for people. I won't give you the final source code so that it's still a fun challenge for you, but I'll Talk through the process and how you can solve it yourself. Let's get started. So the exercise is called model E1337, the rolling code log. If you look at the Hacker 101 CTF page, you might notice that there's actually two versions, a hard one and an expert one. The expert one is actually basically the same, but we'll get to that later. Let's start with the first one. I'll fire up the server and you get to this page. You have to enter a code to unlock. So let's just try the number zero. We have to wait for a bit and then it shows which code it actually expected. From just looking at the codes themselves, I couldn't find any patterns. So we'd have to figure out something else. Now the first part isn't too hard and people have already made write-ups about it. And for this video, I want to focus on the math. So let's just skip over it. By the way, I would encourage you to stop the video at any point and see how you would take it from here. Spend half an hour, an hour, try to fiddle with things, look things up online, and then come back if you, if you need more guidance. So when you finish the first part, you get the source code of the server. Um, so there's a main.py and an rng.py. In the main.py, uh, there's an unlock uh, path. Um, I've kind of hidden away the, uh, the other parts because I don't want to spoil uh, the first part. Uh, and there's an rng.py that has the actual um, logic for generating the codes. So when you submit the form, um, there's the code that you submitted and uh, it gets uh, this 26-bit uh, code from the rng.py routine and then it compares if you guess the, rest, uh, the correct code. So let's look at uh, rng.py and see how it works. So here we have two functions, uh, the setup and the next function with the number of bits uh, that you want uh, the, the, the code for. Uh, and then at the end, we actually call the setup function with some random numbers. And we can already kind of see um, how, uh, how this function is being called. So here we, we get a random range um, uh, that is 16 bits, right? So this is uh, uh, 4 bits, 8 bits, uh, 12 uh, bits, 16 bits. And then here again. And so it just calls this random range function twice and it shifts over um, one of them and it ors them together. So it's effectively the same as getting a random 32-bit number. Um, I don't know exactly why they don't just, why they didn't just do, do something like this, right? Like. Uh, some extra zeros here and then not bother with the shifting and so on. Maybe it's a limitation in Python. Uh, I don't know, um, but it's uh, it's effectively that. So we get into the setup and we can start to figure out um, sort of what's what's going on here. So we already know now that C is, uh, is, is a 32-bit number. And then we'll be setting the state, which is a global variable. We start with zero. And we do this particular thing 16 times. So what do we do exactly? Well, we take the seed and we take um, the lower two bits, right? So the number three here is if you would write the number three in binary, uh, right? Like you get um, uh, one, one, right? That's the, uh, the number three. So it basically masks over the seed and it just gets like the lower, uh, lower two bits. And we call that cur. And then we move over seed uh, to the right. So what was previously sort of like here will now go there. And so the next time we go in this loop, we, we will uh, read those. So if seed is sort of, you know, this, this sort of uh, uh, random, 
uh, 32-bit number. You know, the first time we get these, then we get these, then we get these, and so on. Okay. So already, you know, we're seeing a little bit of bit shifting. We're seeing uh, uh, another bit operator here. There will be a lot more of that. So we have this curve, which is sort of, yeah, scanning out uh, the seed. Let's write that down. Scanning two bits of seed. And then what do we do with that? Well, we take what was previously the state and we move it over to the left. Um, and then we, uh, we take what was previously in the lowest two bits of seed again, and we XOR that with uh, what is here in cur. Okay, so that is the first thing that we do, right? So in the very first iteration, state of course is completely zero. So this piece will be zero and this piece will be zero too. So we will just get those two bits in the lowest uh, two bits of state. But then later on, you know, state might be full already. And so we'll move it over by four and then we'll keep, um, we'll keep the ones on the right and uh, XOR curve with it. And then we, um, we do an OR with that together. So it basically just combines them back together. So say, for example, that uh, state is, let's just uh, do something random here like this. Uh, and let's say that uh, that cur is uh, one zero, for example, right? It's two bits. So what do we get? Uh, basically, it moves over a state uh, four to the right. So we get four zeros on the right here. And then it also took what was previously, you know, the, the lowest two bits of state. So zero, uh, one, and it XORs it with cur. So zero uh, and one XOR together gives one. Similarly, one and zero XOR together also gives one. So we would get one and one there. Okay, so that's good so far, but we also still have those two zeros, right? Remember that we added four zeros at the end because we bit shifted over four. So uh, what is going to happen with that? Well, if you look at the next line here, we say we also XOR state with cur shifted over to, to the left. So that basically means that we will get cur, which is one zero here, and we'll get it here. And this is kind of curious already, right? Like we're not really creating any new information. We're just using cur. Uh, yeah, we basically using this 32-bit seed to generate a 64-bit number, but it will always be the same 64-bit number for the for the same seed. So there's there's not really any new information in here. And in fact, if you want to, you can if if you know this state, you can actually read out the seed because you just take these two numbers and then you take these two numbers, right? And you can just keep going like that because they they are never touched. And so if you if you have this uh, the state, you can actually read out the seed by just uh, sort of skipping over those numbers that are being XORed and just looking at the ones that uh, uh, that are sort of cleanly put in there. Um, and yeah, you can just, just read out the seed that way. So that's, that's kind of interesting. That's how, how we get the state. And so uh, eventually state is a 64-bit number, right? Because for every uh, two bits that we get from uh, seed, we actually sort of generate four bits in state. So we know that state is 64 bit. Okay. So after the setup, we have a um, random number in state. Um, and we will get this next call, right? And if we recall, next is being called with the number 26 here. So we will get uh, 26 bits. Uh, but we can just make a note of that here. All uh, bits is always 26, at least in this implementation. When we get to the hardened quote unquote version later, the expert version of this exercise, it will be more, but it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so what do we do here? So um, we have some sort of return value. We start it out with zero and then we go over the bits and for each bit we do this thing. And the first, first part of this is uh, uh, it's actually pretty easy to understand. So um, we shift over what was already in red by one bit. So if yeah, if we had some content uh, in there already, 
we move it over so that the final bit at the end is always zero. And then we say, okay, we take the, the final bit of state and we XOR that into, into red. And then we do a whole bunch of modifications to state. But um, yeah, like at every point in time, we kind of like take, take the last bit of state and append that to red, so to speak. Um, so then what are the other modifications that are happening? So this is where it gets uh, quite, quite complicated and interesting. This is the fun part, right? So uh, the first thing is we shift over state uh, by one to the left, but then we also do this thing. We shift it over to the right by 61. And so what, what is happening here exactly? This is actually quite tricky. And so I like to um, kind of write this out. So let's uh, presume that uh, the bits in state, we can represent them. Um, say state is, um, so the first bits we call them A, B, C, D, for example. And then there's a whole bunch of other bits, right? Remember it's a 64-bit uh, number. And that, then at the end we get like W, X, Y, Z. So, uh, the, and so yeah, each one of these is an individual bit. So there will be um, 64 of them uh, in total. And so what, what happens then? Um, so first of all, state is being moved over one to the left, right? So we basically get the same thing, but the zero at the end, right? That's the very first thing that happens. Then uh, what do we do? Well, we XOR in uh, state moved 61 to the right. And what does it mean exactly to be 61 to the, to the right? Well, it's a 64-bit number. So... We kind of get the uh, first three. Um, the first three are, are left over, right? So state moved 61 to the right. It's just um, like a lot of zeros, and then A, B, C, and C will be sort of the, the rightmost bit. And that is what is left over. And this will be XORed uh, into this, right? So if we kind of like line them up like this, we can kind of see what is happening. So C will be XORed with zero. And then B will be XORed with Z, and A will be XORed with Y. Okay, well, let's write that down. That is the next thing that happens, right? So we get A, B, C, D, then all this stuff. And then we essentially, yeah, we still have a W, we still have an X, but then we get A XORed with Y, and then B XORed with Z, and C XORed with zero. Well, if you XOR something with zero, you just get um, the original thing, it doesn't do anything. Uh, it's just like adding zero to a number, right? Like five plus zero is still five. Um, and so XOR has that same property. And so this is what we get. So this was kind of our scrapbook. So this is our string now and note that it's 65 bits at this point, right? Because we shifted it over. And so uh, previously, you know, this, this uppermost bit was uh, uh, yeah, this old number was 64 bits, so this was the 64th bit, and this was the first bit, uh, but now this is the 65th bit, okay? And that is important because then in the next step, we end it with, and you can kind of guess what this is, right? This is 4, 8, 12, 16. So if you go all the way here, it's 64. So it just clips it off again. So we bring it back to a 64-bit number, and it's like this. Okay. And then we do something interesting. Okay, so that's sort of like the, the first the first step, this, sort of this first operation. Um, and then we do something interesting, we XOR it uh, with sort of, uh, you know, all ones, lots of ones. Uh, and so let's actually write that out. Um, we, will, we will see in a moment that it kind of cancels out, but uh, just for the sake of completeness, let's write it out completely. So. B gets XORed with 1, C gets XORed with 1, uh, everything that we see in here gets XORed with 1. Uh, let's actually get rid of this W so that we just have like, uh, yeah, a couple in the beginning, a couple at the end. Um, just to keep it a little bit smaller, and so this gets XORed with 1 too, and, and so on. Okay. Okay, so just by doing this exercise, we can kind of like see see what is happening and keep track of like what, what state is at every point. All right, so then we're going to iterate 
um, some some more, right? So we have a, a nested loop in here. So J is going to go from zero all the way up to 64, but exclusive of 64, right? X range means exclusive range, but in steps of four. So in steps of four, you know, it, it probably means that we're doing something um, for each nibble, right? So if, if, if you look, look at this representation, this is a hexadecimal representation. This F here is a nibble of this four bits and so on. And so that's indeed what is happening. So let's see what is going on. So we take the state and we shift it over by how much we have in J, right? So for, in the beginning, we shift it over by zero and then by four and then by eight and then by 12 and so on. And then we end it with um, um, uh, yeah four bits of one, right? So this uh, zero xf just 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 so you know is uh, is the same as like four uh, four ones, right? Like in binary representation. So yeah, we get we get uh, sort of the jth nibble, right? So on the first iteration we get. Uh, uh, we get this one, right, like these four bits, or this uh, nibble, and then we get the next four bits, and then the next four bits, and so on. Okay, like this. And then, uh, what do we do? So we, yeah, we store that in cur, what is uh, what is in there, and then note that we do some operations to cur, we'll get to that in a second, and then here you can see that we XOR it sort of back, right, like cur gets shifted back over to the left by the same amount, so it gets, gets put in the same position again with all the other uh, fields being zero. And then it gets uh, XORed into state at that position. All right, so what change do we make to cur here? Well, again, let's, let's kind of um, you know, give these things names. So let's uh, say that cur is, and let's, let's actually use numbers here so that we don't confuse ourselves with these letters. So let, uh, let's say that cur is one, two, three, four. So these are the four bits uh, of our current nibble, right? And so what happens then? Well, we have to be, we have to look very carefully. So we completely overwrite cur and we say, okay, we take cur and we shift it over three to the right, right? So uh, that, that basically means that um, we chop off one, two, three. So we just keep that one number, right? So this here uh, basically is, uh, is is saying we get just a, uh, let's just do dashes and no, no bits there and then the number one, right? And we do similar things uh, later on and we XOR, uh, or sorry, we OR it all together. Okay, so this first clause is saying we get the number one there. And then this one is saying, okay, that's only shifted by two but then also and it with the number two, right? Like in the number two, like remember that the number two uh, in binary representation uh, is, is just a bit set here. So it's a, a nice bit mask that gives us one bit. And so if we move over two, right? Like we would get two and then, uh, uh, or sorry, let's see, um, we would get uh, one and then two. Um, yeah, is that right? Yeah, that is right. But then we only, we keep a bit mask where we only keep uh, this bit here. And so this two kind of goes away, right? Like it becomes a zero. And then we or it together. And so this or together means that we get this, right? Does this make sense so far? So if we would just do this, we would basically get uh, whatever the value of one was of like twice there in, in, in those two positions. Okay, now we go in the other direction. We shift over cur three to the left. So what does that mean? So if cur was this, basically means that we append three zeros, right? Or like we were using dashes here. Um, so, and then we end it with eight and the uh, binary representation of eight is is this, right? It's just the one being set here. And so these all go away. This all, you know, was already zero. And so, yeah, these uh, these basically disappear. And so we, then we or it with that. And so we get a four here. Okay. And then something similar to before, we move it two to the left this time. So we get 
we get this. And then we end it with four, which, okay, just for completeness, that is this, right? So it's a bit mask where we just have this bit set, which means that just this four remains set. Everything else kind of goes away. So we get, yeah, a number that just has like this, this four here. And so we or it in there. And so this is what we get, right? So if we start with um, cur being those four bits, one, two, three, and four, we end up with it being uh, this. So interesting, right? Like we throw away two in numbers two and three here. We just kind of use uh, uh, use those those two bits, bits number four and bits number and bits number one. Okay. But then we XOR it in, right? So we XOR it in in the original position again. Okay. What does that mean? What does that mean to our state, right? When we have gone through this whole loop. So let's just say that here. Uh, and let's actually add one more letter here because here we have a complete nibble, but here we are kind of missing one letter. So if in the beginning here, we would have said that there's also a letter E there, right? Then we can kind of keep track of that. We have a nice nibble here, nothing. Well, E would have also uh, been inverted uh, by this line here. Um, so that is fine. And so, okay, then what happens here? Okay, so let's look at this first nibble, right? So if this is our nibble, uh, these are our four bits, uh, then this B XORed with one uh, is our uh, is a one in our representation here in our cur, um, and this one corresponds to this two, and this one corresponds to the three, and so on. So we will XOR it with four four. So it basically means, um, yeah. Let's just write this uh, out for a second. So we will say like only one of four are really important, right? So one is basically this, and four is basically this. So we will XOR the first nibble with, um, with this, this, these four bits, right? And so what happens if we XOR this with that? Let's just line them up here so that we can see more easily. So we XOR this whole thing with this whole thing and this whole thing with this whole thing and so on. So what we get is uh, E1 XOR with B, Extract with one. You can already see that the ones cancel out, right? So we can get rid of those ones. And then for the next one, we XOR E1 with a C, extract with one. And so again, the ones cancel out, so we can kind of like forget about that. And let's do that a little bit more quickly here. This becomes BD, this becomes BE, right? And so this is probably why they they do this to make our lives a little bit easier so that we don't have to uh yeah so that they cancel out easily and we don't have to worry too much about uh, uh about them it uh, makes the math a little bit easier here okay so that is this first nibble and then you know like the same thing basically happens here so you can work this out on your own but remember this is number four and it gets uh, XORed with this one and this one, and this is number one, and it gets XORed with this one and this one. So let's just do that real quick. So we get basically this uh, X1, XORed with this C1. Again, the ones disappear, so let's not worry about that. Then we get this one here, uh, XORed with that one, so we get A, Y, C. Then we get this third one, uh, XORed with the first one, so we get B, Z, X, and then at the end we get um, X, C again. And so notice something interesting here, and that is that, um, let, yeah, let's actually rewrite them so that they're always ordered alphabetically, right? So it uh, makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm trying to say here. So uh, E, B becomes B, E, and this becomes C, E. These are already alphabetical, and I can also turn this one around. Go. Let's oops. Let's swap this Z and this X, and then okay. So one thing that is interesting is that um, for each nibble, the first and the last bits are always the same, 
right? And that is very logical because, you know, we XOR 1, 2, 3, 4 with 4, 4, 1, 1. So this 4 and this 1 get XOR together and this 1 and this 4 get XOR together. But that's the same, right? Like you can swap them uh, as you will. And so here, yeah, you can see the same thing. The ones in the middle uh, are not the same. They're kind of a bit more complex. Um, but information is lost, right? Like every time we do this, um, there was some information before. And like, you know, at the very first first uh, step, state has uh, 64 bits in it. I mean, already at that point, it's really only 32 bits because you can completely, uh, yeah, get back those 32 bits from uh, from the 64. But let's just say, you know, it's, it's 64 bits. But then when we go through all of this, even once, um, we don't actually have 64 bits of information anymore, right? Um, we actually lose information because we know that it's guaranteed that all these bits will be the same. So if you would kind of like um, give me the state without uh, all, all those duplicated bits, I, you know, I still have the same amount of information that is in the state right now. Like I could reconstruct the 64-bit state uh, from, uh, from that. So that's very interesting and it's, it's kind of a key observation for, uh, for actually working out the math there. So, okay, that is what is happening. And so um, this is the operation, right? Like, and this happens for each, uh, each time that we go through this loop. For, so for each bit that we, uh, that we request, um, state gets modified in this way, where if in the beginning it is sort of this, then at the end it is this. And it's really these two operations, right? Like one where we kind of like move stuff around. Uh, so yeah, the way I kind of like visualize it for myself is we move stuff to the left and then some stuff falls over and kind of pops up back here. Um, and I think that this is an operation where information is not really lost, although this B shows up twice. So that's kind of weird. So maybe there's some information lost even there. And then, uh, and then really sort of this inversion plus this operation is kind of really one operation that um, does this, uh, this thing for each nibble where, um, where it kind of makes the first and the last bit of the nibble the same. And, and kind of like, yeah, scram scrambles them around a bunch. Okay, then we have that, and then we have a new state, and then we go to the top of the loop again, and we get the last bit of the state again, right? So we can mark the information that is known to us. So at, at the very, yeah, so we know that um, um, after a bunch of rounds of this, we will have, uh, Let's write it down, known our Z, right? Because we get that bit uh, from the very first um, round. Uh, but then at the, at the next round, the last bit of state will be C um, XORT with X. And so the next time we get here, that will be put into our uh, return value. And so that will be a known value, that one, that one single bit will be known. And then you can kind of work this out, right? Like you can do this manually. I did this for, uh, for myself when I was working through the problem, just to kind of see how this would behave. So you can basically do this whole same exercise, but start with this instead of these A, B, C, D. Um, but basically go through the same motions and you get more complex and more complex things uh, popping up here. Um, but it, it's basically the same deal, right? So let's just do like one quick example of that, just so you know kind of how this works, right? So if if we would look at the next round, uh, we start with this, right? So everything is still expressed in terms of what state was like in the very beginning, uh, but we can just keep operating on this. So we know that uh, this operation is kind of happening, right? Like where uh, from from this thing, we go to this thing. Only, yeah, we can kind of like plug this in here. So this is sort of like the A in there, this is the B in there, and so on. And so we can see that this next state will be 
well, first of all, we just get uh, like this first bit disappears, but then the next four bits are still there. So this first one we can ignore, but then these one, and also, yeah, the next one, uh, but let's just skip that for now, will be there. Well, we can give it a name, right? We can say, oh, well, this is F, or we could have given this uh, the name F here and kind of like thread it through all there. Anyway, uh, let's just ignore it for now. Uh, just, I just want to show you sort of how to do this exercise. So that is that becomes this uh, beginning, and then everything here sort of like shifts over, right? So it shifts over by one. So uh, we basically get get this, but then a zero at the end. And then if you remember the first three bits here, we're going to be XORed with these, or like with the last three bits that we have here. So these are the last three bits, and these were the first three bits. So we basically get this XORed in here. We get this one XORed in here. And we get this one XORed with zero, but that's just uh, this. And we can already see some stuff canceling out. So if if you have a number that gets XORed with itself, it will always be zero, right? Like, And so you can just remove it, so this B, shows up twice here, so we can get rid of it. And the C shows up twice here, so we can get rid of it. So it doesn't become too complex here. And then, you know, we would kind of like go through this and do the same operation on the nibble. See, so yeah, you, you get the idea. You would kind of work this uh, all the way through. And so that is how I would solve this manually, right? Like if I, if I were put in prison and I was told, you know, you can only get out if you, if you solve all of this with pen and paper, um, you know, I could do it, right? Like I could basically go through the motions and then what would we have? Well, at the end, we would know again. So, well, first, you know, we would get this nibble stuff again. Uh, but let's say that at some point, you know, we, we, we would get something uh, again where we would know the bit at the end, right? Like say, for example, that after all this nibble stuff, we would get something, I don't know, like with an F here, whatever, right, like something, and then we would say, okay, then on the next uh, round, this bit would be made known to us, right, it would be included in this return value. And so now we have another known value, okay. So um, this, this, is, this is where it becomes very interesting, right, like we will, we will basically have um, information where it says, okay, well, Z equals one, for example, right? Like if, if we got the number one from it, and we will know that uh, C XORed with X will be the number zero, and this whole thing might be the number one again, right? Like if, if that is what we got out of it. And so we can, um, uh, yeah, we will get this information, and we will get a lot more of them, right? Like uh, in the first round, we will get 26 bits, but we can actually hit this unlock endpoint multiple times and get like the 26 after that and after that because this state just stays around. And so it's fairly easy to reason about if you want to play with this yourself, right? Like you can just run this Python thing and you can call next with just one bit and kind of see see what happens to the state then and uh, play, it, play it back more slowly or you can plug it in with a larger number to get uh, more at once. But in any case, um, we can basically get as much information, as many of these equations, out as we want. And what we will have then is what is called a system of equations. So a system of equations, um, yeah, describe uh, a known set of variables, um, or like, yeah, we want to know what all these values are, right? Like we want to know what C is, for example, because if we know what C is, if we can know all these variables, we can just, um, you know, initialize this program. We can set the state to, um, to this value because, yeah, that is what this is. Remember, this is just a state. And so if we know all these, all these bits and we know the entire state, so we can just plug it in. And we can just run this program for as many calls to next as we want. And that way we will know what the next uh, code will be, right? Like we can call it with 26 and then with 26 again, and then with 26 again. And then maybe that is the next code, right? Um, and so that is the ultimate goal. 
uh, is figuring out what the state is. Okay, so a system of equations, how does that help? So um, let's, let's look at a, a slightly uh, a simpler system of equations um, just to, just to um, figure out uh, how this works. So you might remember this from high school, right? Like if you have something like, uh, you know, you might have the variables x, uh, x, y, and z, for example, and we can have an equation, right? We can have an equation where it's like, if you do x times 4 plus, uh, plus y, and then maybe, uh, you know, plus uh, 2 times z, that equals 0. Okay, now there's, of course, a lot of uh, values for x, y, and z that, that, would, uh, that would work for this. Uh, but, but then you might have another equation, right? You might have, like, for example, y plus z equals 10. Okay, so now it becomes more interesting. Uh, maybe maybe we also have another one, right? Like um, maybe we also have. Well, I think uh, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's say that we also have like two times x plus uh, plus z uh, equals uh, minus five, right? So this is our system of equations. So, so given this, um, can we figure out an x, y, and a z? so that all of these equations hold. And so you might vaguely remember how this works, right? So you can say, okay, well, let's, uh, let's start substituting things. So we can say, like, um, let's get rid of y because we can actually rewrite this uh, equation uh, because this is the same as saying uh, y equals 10 minus e. Okay, right? We just move c over to the other side. And so if we plug this in here, we know y is exactly this, so we can plug this in here. Okay, so we get a 10 minus z, and then plus 2z. Okay, well, if you have 2z, but you subtract 1z from it again, that's just 1z. Okay, so now we have plus z. And we can also move this 10 over to the other side, right? Then it becomes minus 10. We can subtract 10 from... Uh, from both sides of the equation. So now we have a much simpler equation. Okay, uh, but we have another equation that we can use. So we can say, okay, let's maybe get rid of z, right? So we can say, okay, let's move z over, uh, or like, um, yeah, let's take this equation here. Um, we subtract two times x from both sides. So then we have just z left here and we get minus five minus two times x. Okay, so that is what z is. So now we can just plug this in here in our original equation. And so, you know, we get uh, four times x minus five minus two times x. Well, if you have four times x and you subtract two, two times x from it again, that is just two times x. And then we can add five to both sides. Okay, so then we get minus five here and we can divide both sides by two. So we can just get x here and we get five, uh, five over two. Uh, and so now we know what x is. Okay, so we know what one of them is. And you know, if we know what one of them is, we can, we can basically just plug it in and figure out the other ones because we had you know, z here and z is just uh, in terms of x. So we can just plug in x here and then you know, uh, yeah, you can just plug this in your calculator and you know the value of, uh, of z. And then once you know the value of z, you just plug it in here and you know why. Okay, so once you have one of them, you, you kind of have, uh, have them all because you can just substitute them back in. Now, there is a general process for doing this. Uh, and it is called Gaussian uh, elimination. And so um, it's, it's pretty simple. But if you go to the Wikipedia page, uh, there's a lot more information about it. Uh, and it's not, it's not too complicated. So it looks, uh, it looks a little bit uh, daunting with all the matrices stuff. So let's actually see what that means. So here again, they show an example um, uh, with a system of equations, just like we had uh, here with uh, X, Y, and Z. Um, 
and you can just write it like this, right? You can just leave out the X and the Y and the Z and just kind of like write it as a two-dimensional matrix of numbers. And so you kind of have, you know, this special column here, which is sort of on the right-hand side, uh, what all those, um, those equations should equal to. And then on the left, you have sort of like the, the values for, uh, for, for all the equations. So each row in this matrix represents one equation and each column corresponds to one of the variables. If a variable doesn't show up in the equation, you can just have the number zero there, right? Like zero times C uh, would just be zero. So um, that's how you represent just variables not being there. And we can do the same thing for uh, our XOR uh, system, right? So let's actually see how we would represent our XOR equations like this. So, you know, here we have, for example, z equals 1, and this xor, uh, c xor uh, x equals 0, and this, uh, this equaling 1, and so on. So if we would have a matrix, right, where, where sort of like the columns are like a, and then b, and then c, and then d, and then e, and then instead of, um, you know, the operation being plus, it would be xor. And that actually makes sense because um, uh, basically XOR is just plus, but in binary, <laughs> uh, kind of, modulo 2. It's, it's plus modulo 2. Anyway, you don't have to know, know that. It just kind of works the same way with XOR. That's, that's all you need to know. And so if we represent this matrix like this, and let's just say like dot, dot, dot here, because it will be a very large matrix, right? Um, so uh, the last columns will be like X and then uh, Y and then Z. And then uh, let, let's just say like um, uh, result, because that is, uh, that is that special column, right? And so here, you know, this, in this equation, all of these would be zero, like they don't participate in this equation, except for Z. Um, that is the only one in this case that participates in this equation and we know uh, its value, uh, we, we said, you know, just for the sake of this exercise, that it's one. But we would really get this value from the code, right? Like if you uh, actually look at the code that we got here, um, if I do this again, you can just plug that uh, uh, code into, into binary form, uh, convert it into binary form. Uh, we know that it's 26 bits, so be careful that... Um, you know, if it start if if in binary form it starts with a zero, you don't you don't miss out on that. Um, but in any case, yeah, we can just read out these uh, these values from that. So this first one we know is this, and then we know that the second one, um, you know, we don't have an A, we don't have a B, but we uh, we have uh, uh, variable C and X that get XOR. So we have a, a C being one here, and then we we get. Uh, a one in the spot of X, and then these don't participate. And we know that this value um, was zero, we said. Okay, and so you basically get a row here, like an equation for every value that you get from the code. And so from the original code, we get 26 values. Now we have 64 variables that we want to solve for, and only 26 equations to get to 64 um, variables is probably not going to cut it. So we can request the code multiple times. And so, um, you know, the next time we would get uh, 52, uh, yeah, we would have 52 equations in total. Uh, and then, and then uh, yeah, you, you, keep, you keep adding them up. Um, so, okay. Um, Let's say that, that you have this, then what do you do? Um, I mean, it's, it's a bit of work to get this in the first place, right? Like you have to figure, you basically have to do this process that I did manually here. Um, you have to write a program to do that and to, uh, at the end of it, uh, write, um, uh, write an entry to this, to this matrix. So yeah, you have to keep track of the state itself and so if you think about it you can actually represent the state 
uh, the state variables themselves as a um, uh, as a bunch of these rows as well, <laughs> right? So in the beginning, if you think about uh, sort of how is state represented, right? Um, well, like okay, let's actually get get to that in in a moment. Let's uh, let's say that you do all of this, and that you get this matrix out of it. Then, how do you then actually find these uh, uh, these letters? Yeah, the, the these bits. Well, you do this Gaussian elimination thing. There's a very nice algorithm that is at the bottom here. It tells you exactly how to solve this. Uh, basically, what what you have to do is, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of shown here as well. It's very sim uh, um, sort of similar to to how how we did it manually. So the idea is that you go from a matrix like this, right, which just, yeah, uh, which is, represents uh, something like this, and you say, okay, well, let's solve one of these variables first. So in our example here, we also, we solved uh, for, uh, we got the value for, for um, uh, I think in our case, we actually got the value for x first, and then we plugged it in everywhere. Well, it kind of works similarly here. So you basically want to take um, one of these, uh, yeah, you start with a certain column and you say, okay, let's start subtracting um, this column f uh, from the columns above it. Uh, and in our case, um, all, the, all the operations are XORing, right? So, so in our case, it will look something more like, you know, we have something like this. And uh, yeah, just, just to make, make a, a slightly smaller example, right? Like we have something like this. Uh, this, okay, and so these are, this is our system of equations. And so we say, okay, um, we, in this column, we only want the one in this row. And so for all the other rows, we're going to XOR this row with it. And, and that's always allowed, like, and you can think about that for a second, because if you have, so in, in this case, you know, if we have, if these are the letters A, B, C, and result, then this basically means like uh, uh, A X or C equals one, right? And this basically means B X or C equals zero. And this basically means one, uh, or sorry, A X or C equals one. And so I can always, um, oh, sorry, this is just A equals one. And so I can always XOR this entire thing with this entire thing, because that basically means that I'm saying, okay, I'm XORing this with this, and I'm XORing this with this. Um, and if you think about it, that is always allowed, because we know that uh, um, A XOR C is one, so we could have just set one here. Right, and so now we just actually both sides with one, and so the equation just still holds. Okay, so yeah, so that, that hopefully makes sense. So in this case, that would mean that you know this A would cancel out, and we would just get this C, and this uh, one would cancel out, and that would become zero. Right, so we would just, if we would extra this whole thing with this whole thing, we would get like uh, a zero uh, here, we would get a one here, and we would get a zero here. Okay, uh, and then we basically keep doing that. So we say, okay, we just want a one in this column and all the other ones we will XOR with it. And then we go sort of like diagonally down. And we say, okay, we just want a one in this column and everything below it has to be zero. Well, that's already the case. And then here, um, yeah, there's nothing below it. So, so we're also done. So this is um, uh, uh, in what they call uh, uh, echelon form, echelon, I, I don't know how you pronounce it. So it's an echelon form, uh, which basically means that sort of like this, uh, there's this triangle. So on the uh, bottom left of this uh, of this matrix, it's all zeros because we've uh, sort of deliberately zeroed them all out, uh, which means that uh, at the bottom row, uh, and you, you can also swap items, right? So if, if we would have had sort of like these two swapped, then um, you know, if, if we start here, we find one that is uh, below it, that is a one, and we swap with it first so that we always get that one. Anyway, you, you can read the algorithm on this page. Um, 
And so, yeah, at the bottom right here, we should always get uh, like one equation that just straight up says, you know, what this last bit is, right? So here we just get like, okay, this bit is just, uh, it, in this case, C is zero. And then you can start sort of like working your way back and substituting it back in. So then you can say, okay, well, if we know that C is zero, we can just fill that in here and kind of like get rid of the C here. So we can just XOR this whole thing with this whole thing. Uh, and that's equivalent to sort of filling in C. In our case, yeah, XOR is, is just so convenient. You can just XOR things with each other all the time. And so if we would XOR this with that, it would basically mean that all of this would become zero. So we know that uh, uh, in this case, B is zero. And then we keep going, right? So we say, okay, well, we want to XOR, yeah, we want to um, uh, just get this A here. And, uh, and so we want to XOR out the C. And so we can XOR this with that. So that would basically mean that this would become a zero. Well, C was zero, so uh, this one would not change. And so now we know that A is one. And so we have solved our system of equations, and now we can just read out, you know, a is one, b is zero, c is zero. So we can actually just look at this this column here, and this column, uh, yeah, if you just put those bits uh, uh, one after the other, we would get our, our uh, yeah, our bits one uh, a b c uh, one zero zero. Okay. So then when you have that, you can just, you have your state, right? You can just plug it in uh, this Python program and just read out what the next um, uh, result would be. But how do we get this matrix in the first place? Because that is kind of tricky. So um, yeah, you saw how I did it by hand. So there was, um, uh, Basically, the one thing I was keeping track of the whole time is uh, so for each position, for each bit in the state, what were the original uh, variables? Um, where did they sort of move to? Right, and so if you if you kind of look at it uh, like that, um, um, you can say that the state is comprised of sixty-four bits at each point, and each sixty-four bits are uh, each of those 64 bits are an XORing of any of the uh, bits in the original state, right? The original state we called A, B, C, D, E, and, and so on. And so, um, yeah, at any point in time, each bit is sort of like um, an XORing of those together. So we can actually keep an array, right? Like we, we can keep an array where we say, okay, you know, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the current state right and, and and so we have we have an array and um, let's say like in the first point of the array like we have uh, well at, at the very beginning you know we only have a sort of represented here right so you can do that like this uh, you can do it like this this is sort of the first bit is just a and then the second bit in the beginning is just B and so on. But then at some point it gets much more complicated, right? So like in this case, uh, the first bit is like an XORing of C and E. You can represent it like this and then the next one is, is B and D. So this is one way of representing it. The way I represented it in my program is uh, each of those, um, uh, instead of using an array here, I would kind of like use the same um, you know, it's kind of like a 64-bit number here. So I, I would actually have a number here that represents those. So, so maybe this was C and E, so that would be, you know, uh, uh, one for C and then one for E and then like a lot of zeros all the way to, um, to X, Y, and Z at the end there. Something like that, and I would have another number here. And yeah, it doesn't really matter all that much. Like this whole thing is not super performance intensive. Um, it's just kind of a fun, a fun way of um, noticing that you can represent both this, uh, this set of equations and the current state uh, sort of in this way. Uh, because then what you can do if you uh, say, okay, 
you know, we got another bit of information, right? Like we got, for example, uh, uh, this PDF, um, and we know that that is the last bit, right? It's like the, the final element in this array. It's sort of like uh, important, right? Like this, because this final element will be the element where we know, okay, this will be equal to some number that we got from, from, from the code, right? Because it was uh, returned. So this will be uh, equal to a particular bit. So, you know, if, if we have like this, this number here at some point, right? Like uh, this, this state representation, we want to basically plug this whole thing into, into our matrix here uh, and add a new entry, right? And so it would basically be like, oh, this, you know, this is, this is our A and this is our B and so on. And then at the very end, we get like one bit for the result, either a one or a zero, depending on what we get from the code. Um, so yeah, that is kind of how it works, but this is, this is almost enough, but not quite. I found that if I just implemented this, um, I never had, or like I often didn't have enough um, uh, information to actually restore the original state. And so this is where the insight that we had um, earlier uh, came into play. So we know that after we this routine here has been run once, right? Like it just has to be run once. Uh, we know that every nibble has this property where the first bit in the nibble has the same value as the fourth bit in the nibble. And that, um, and so instead of saying like, okay, we want to know the original state, we can say, well, let's just look at the state after like one run, right? Like it doesn't matter really, it could be the 10th run or the 100th run, like, um, the state doesn't have to be the very original state that we got when the, you know, web server was first started. It can be really any any um, state, which is actually a really nice property of this solution because, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, they 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 could actually modify uh, our main dot this main dot pi routine or like the rng routine here by just saying okay, you know, let's just call next uh, with like a lot of bits just so that you uh, cannot, um, uh, yeah, you cannot get any information from the original seed or so. I'll, I'll get to that in a second again, because there's this another vulnerability in this, uh, in this particular code. But um, this way of uh, solving it really doesn't care sort of like, you know, where you start off because this, uh, this state A, B, C, D, E could be sort of like, you know, any, uh, any previous state. And so, okay, if we say say that we care, you know, we're solving for some state uh, where this had already happened, uh, then we know that for each nibble this property holds, and you can actually add it as uh, as additional rules to this matrix, right? So we we can say, okay, if you XOR uh, A and D together, uh, they should always have the same value, so that should always be a zero. Right, like if you XOR the same value together, you always get a zero. And then similarly, right, like if I XOR, you know, uh, the, the nibbles here together, right, like uh, or, or like the, the first value and the fourth value from the next nibble and so on, that's also, also a zero. So you basically, for each nibble, you would get a rule like this, that, um, that those two bits should have the same value. And if you add that, I was able to always uh, always get a result and have enough equations in my system, uh, yeah, enough information in there so that it's always solvable. Now, um, there are some some other tricks that could have that you could have found um, to avoid all of this math altogether. Uh, so let me just quickly go over those. So the first one is you can, uh, we notice that the seed is actually 32 bits, right? And that's, you, with, you know, with enough time, uh, it's not, it doesn't take that much time to just try out all 32 bit uh, numbers. And so if you just call the setup function with every 32 bit number 
and then call next with 26 uh, bits. Um, and then maybe also next again for like the bits after that. And then you start a fresh server, right? Like you basically say, okay, let's terminate, terminate the server, restart it, and then start a fresh one. And then, you know, just get like the first two numbers. Then you can kind of brute force it that way. You can uh, just see if those two numbers, um, yeah, match any any of the uh, uh, the calls that you can make here just by iterating through all the setup, um, uh, yeah, through, through all through all the possible thirty two bit uh, setup calls. And so that is what I did originally for the for the first one, and then uh, for the hardened version, they accidentally. <laughs> um, they accidentally uh, left that in. So it looks like they, they pass in a 64-bit uh, number to, uh, uh, to set up, but they accidentally then still only use 32 bits of it. And there's actually a tweet of uh, the person who created this, um, uh, this exercise um, saying that, yeah, they, they made a mistake there. So, uh, and because of that, basically the hardened version is not really that much harder you still have to do kind of like a different you still have to kind of guess where to find the source code because they also modified the actual algorithm a little bit um, but once you've done that you know it, the algorithm is very similar so you can just modify your original program to solve this in a very slight way and get uh, 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 get a program that solves, solves that but you could also just hard uh, yeah, br brute force it by trying out all the uh, uh, all the 32-bit seeds in that case. So I really hope that there will come a V3 in which uh, in which that is solved. So you really have to you can uh, yeah you really have to implement it using this this math using the Gaussian elimination uh, and using the insights that those um, those bits from those nipples are always the same after after one call. Because uh, that's that's it's just much more satisfying once you actually implement all of this stuff and it it works and you get the flag. All right, that was it for the walkthrough. Um, I hope you learned something. Now go off and try implementing this for yourself and see if you can make it work. It's quite tricky. It took me two whole days to figure this out, but it's fun and educational. So if you have any questions or any other ways to do this or any any help that might be useful for others leave it leave it in the comments and we can all learn from each other this way also if you like this video smash that like button hit that subscribe button and turn on that little bell for the notifications i'm just kidding i'm i'm not a youtuber <laughs> also this is my first time doing a video like this so if you like it let me know maybe i can do more of these <laughs>